I'm Nicky Byrne and we're here in the Dairy Beef Village at Moor Park 25 and I'm joined by Paul Nolan from Dawn Meats. Currently over 60% of prime Finnish cattle in Ireland originate from the dairy herd and those animals ability to meet overall carcass specification is of increasing importance. Paul could you outline to us why achieving carcass spec is so important and what is the ultimate spec for our dairy beef animals? Yeah, well, obviously, it's back to the old adage, Nicky, you've got to produce what the customer is looking for. And we know on the feedback from our, particularly our retail clients, what the consumers of Europe are looking for. And predominantly, they're looking for steaks of a certain size and thickness and at a certain price level. So to equate that back to the carcasses, we are saying <clears throat> that the ideal carcass is between 280 and 380 kilo an O plus to an R plus, a fat score three to four plus. Okay, perfect. And Paul, we know genetics has a massive, massive factor. If you look at some of the research studies outlined here today, we know that high beef sub index animals and the dairy beef index have an increase in ability to achieve that overall spec in terms of weight and confirmation. But physically, if we go back maybe to some of the physical traits that dairy farmers can look for when picking a beef bull, what should they be looking for on that animal? Well, I suppose what we're looking for is an animal that's going to uh, finish as early as possible. And that's going to give you, as I said earlier, a carcass size of, let's say, an average of 350 kilos for bullocks, around 300, 320 kilos for uh, heifers. And what they're looking for is an animal that is going to be um, giving us a steak size that fits the consumer's requirement. And so, as I said to you earlier, that is in terms of producing uh, an animal that's not less really than an O plus in, in a confirmation and certainly no more than, say, a four equals in fat cover. Okay, perfect. And I suppose if we look at some of the trends in terms of breeding on, on dairy farms, we see, you know, massive uptake of sex semen. And we now are at a point where we have a higher level of beef calf registrations coming from the dairy herd than dairy dairy registrations. What does that, how important is the use of beef sires over maybe lower carcass quality, uh, you know, dairy, dairy animals? How important is that to, to your business? Well, I suppose we could maybe just outline that here uh, in terms of just two examples we have in the chill. So both of these are Angus Cross Frisian. Uh, as you can see, there is a considerable uh, weight difference. Uh, this carcass here is in fact an O minus, and that's probably in its own right looks okay, but when you start to compare the volume of meat that's there compared to the volume of meat in terms of meat yield on this quarter here, which is an R minus, you can see the variation is large. So I suppose our message is whether it's not so much the breed, <clears throat> it's within the breeds making sure you're getting genetically the best opportunity to produce a calf that the beef finisher who's ultimately going to take the calves from the dairy farm has a chance of getting into a premium market. Okay, and I suppose we're kind of mid-summer now, Paul, and these cattle will have probably been drafted from a forage-based diet. And really, you know, one of the key uh, criteria to draft cattle is that they have appropriate carcass fatness. You know, how do farmers assess that? And where are the key areas on that carcass that you have to ensure there's sufficient fatness? Yeah, well, I suppose you're looking at the tush or just here at the butt of the animal. You're also looking along the line. And then the view that you get looking head on at the animal in what we call the dewlap or the brisket area is, are the three vital indicators, really. Okay. And just in a summary, what are some of the, you know, the key opportunities that you see or the rapid gains that can be made in terms of improving the quality of beef? coming from the Irish dairy herd? Yeah, well, I suppose, it, first of all, to define quality, the, the, the basic quality of Irish beef coming from grass-fed systems with the type of breeding we do generally here has gained us an exceptionally good reputation across the premium world markets. The point here is that we've got to have that very good beef in a form that the consumer will readily purchase. So, you know, what we don't want to see is a scenario where the consumer goes in, looks at two steaks, and they're attractive, but they're very big steaks, for example, and very heavy, because the price point of that will lead that consumer to saying, what are my alternatives? So it's very important, therefore, that within the whole genetic 
table work that's done that we end up with something that is fit for you, your dinner plate and mine at a price that's okay with us. That's, that's the very basic requirement. Okay. So I suppose in summary uh, from the village here today, we can see you know, the contribution of animal genetics is massive. It creates the potential within our dairy beef systems. However, the management of those animals in terms of the grass-based nutrition and the drafting policy that we put in place can really fine-tune our dairy beef systems and create a pathway for profitable and sustainable beef production.